Praise God, everyone. Praise God. Welcome, welcome again, everyone, to the Sunday School lesson on, on December 3rd, 2017. This is Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama, and I am your speaker for this Sunday School lesson of this morning. Um, we have um, went to a new number and a new line. Uh, we're now on the um, God in the Midst blog talk radio ministry. Uh, we were having some technical difficulties on God on uh, Guiding Light, and uh, so we 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 over here today. Uh, this may be a permanent situation if we can't work out the technical difficulties on the Guiding Light, but we're going to continue to be live here on Facebook. And so if you want to uh, come back after uh, the Facebook broadcast is over and go into overtime with us, the number to dial is 619-639-4733. Again, 619-639-4733. I want to uh, thank Apostle Barbara Kizzy, um, the, the leader of the God in the Midst Ministry, for allowing us to come on her conference call line this this morning and uh, to bring the word, hallelujah. Uh, and so we just want to give God the praise for that. Uh, today, um, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. And we believe it is truly a day to praise the Lord. So we want to give the Lord all the praise, all of the glory. Uh, he's so wonderful. He's so marvelous. And he's so mighty. Uh, we, we are continuing to pray for um, the God in Light ministry. and Because uh, we're still a part of the God in Light ministry. And we just thank God for all that he's doing with that ministry as it is growing. Uh, we believe this technical difficulty is part of the growing pains. Amen, amen. I think we got too many people or something coming on the server. And that's a wonderful and wonderful thing to have. Amen, amen. So at this time, uh, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer here in a minute here. I'm um, trying to uh, do a little something here on the, uh, on the Facebook uh, trying to, to share uh, see but it ain't giving me what I need <laughs> uh, see, God and Light Ministry Incorporated no it's not giving me what I need right now so I'm just going to leave that alone let us go to the Lord in prayer dear Heavenly Father we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings we thank you Lord that you've been better to us than we have been to ourselves we thank you Lord for your darling son Jesus our Savior and Lord. We thank you for his death, his burial, and his resurrection. We thank you, the Heavenly Father, for your Holy Spirit who rests, rules, and abides with us and seals us until the day of redemption. We thank you, Lord, for the power of your Holy Spirit, the anointing of your Holy Spirit. And we are calling on you right now, dear Lord, to anoint us afresh like never before, that we might be... Uh, part of your will and your way in teaching this lesson and receiving this lesson and then let this lesson to heavenly father be a lesson that encourages us strengthen us and then even save some of us oh glory hallelujah thank you lord so now lord we just plead the blood over this technology and these ministries lord we just plead your blood over everyone listening now and that's going to be listening to this recording later we know that there's power uh wonder working power in the precious blood of the lamb bless us now lord with signs and wonders the lord that we might recognize who you truly are your god and your god all by yourself and we give you glory god and we thank you in jesus name amen and amen um, this morning's lesson comes from Acts, Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 3. So turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 3. 
and uh, we're going to go from the 11th verse on, uh, down to the 21st verse. But let it be known, I'm going to talk about the first first verses also. <laughs> but I'm just going to read the 11th down to the 21st. And I'm reading out of a new King James Version of the Bible. And it says, Now as the Lamb, I mean, now as the lame man, who was healed, held on to Peter and John. All the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's great, great uh, Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? And why look so intently at us? As though by our own power or goodness, we had made these men walk. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and kill the prince of life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. And his name, though uh, through faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and, and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him his perfect soundness in his presence, of all, in the presence of all of you. Yet now, brethren, I know that you, that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all of his prophets that he, the Christ, would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. So, verse 19, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so, so that time of refreshment may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send Jesus Christ whom who was preached to you before whom heaven must receive until the time of restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Amen, amen, amen. Um, uh, this lesson, this lesson, uh, we're dealing now with, with uh, the faith. And, and this first first lesson is a faith in Jesus. That's, that's the Sunday school uh, lesson title. And we know that this is about a uh, Peter and John healing a lame man. Well, I, I want to give it, I want to give this lesson uh, a, a little title. I want to give this lesson a little title uh, uh, so that, that, that we can really understand this lesson. Uh, uh, and, and the title is Tell It Like It Is. I, I don't know if you, you remember this old song by Aaron Neville. Aaron Neville, Aaron Neville sung this song way back in the day. And he says, if, if you want something to play with, go and find yourself a toy. Baby, my, my time, he says, is too expensive, and I'm not a little boy. If, if, you, if you are serious, don't play with my heart. It makes me furious. But, but if you want me to love you, then, baby, I will. Girl, you know that I will. So tell it. Tell it like it is. Don't be ashamed to let your conscience be your guide. But I know deep down inside me, I believe you love me. Forget your foolish pride. Life is too short to have sorrows. 
You may be here today and gone tomorrow. You, you might as well get what you want. So go and live, baby. Go on and live. Tell it like it is. I'm nothing to play with. Go and find yourself a toy. But I tell you, I need you to just tell it like it is. Because my time is too expensive. And I'm not a little boy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. It's telling it like it is. Because, because, because Peter, Peter understood that his time was, was too expensive to be playing around like he's just a little boy. And he started telling it like it is. Now, 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 I had an old godmother named Miss Baby. Miss Baby said, tell it like it is. Tell it like it is. And so here it is in this text. A miracle has been wrought. A miracle. God has performed a miracle. And, 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 the, and that miracle, that sign, that wonder that God had performed got the people's attention. And, 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 and that's how signs and wonders are. They, it gets people attention, whether they are believers or unbelievers. When something supernatural happens, people get excited. People start giving thanksgiving and, and giving God praise when something miraculous happen. That's why when you hear many of the preachers pray, we, we pray, Lord, do, do your signs and your wonders. Yes, because we know that that gets people's attention. In this case, Peter and John were headed to the temple for their daily prayer, their hourly prayer at the temple. And it was about the ninth hour, which is three o'clock in the afternoon. And they were going in to pray. And they saw a man who, 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 who was lame, been lame from, from his mother's womb. And people would carry him and lay him at the gates of the temple called beautiful so that he could ask for an arm, so that he could ask for a little money. And Peter and John saw him and they looked him in the eyes. They looked at him. They didn't ignore him. You know how we are these days. We see somebody homeless. We see somebody lame, begging for arms and money. We just look over him. But no, no, they, they looked at him. And it says they fixed their eyes at him. And they looked at him. And so, he was so shocked, the lame man, that Peter and John looked at him, that he gave them his attention. And Peter said some powerful words. He said, silver and gold have I not. But what I do have, I give unto you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And Peter took him by the hand, the right hand, and lifted him up. And immediately his, his feet and his ankles received their strength. So he leaped up, started walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw this man walking and leaping and praising God. And they knew who he was. They knew he was the one that had been begging at the temple. They knew he was the one that sat at the gate called beautiful and, and begging for arms. And they saw this amazing thing happen. That's the background of this lesson. And so as we look at this lesson, as we look at this lesson, we, 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 we're going to look at it from the standpoint of divine healing, divine correction, and divine necessity. And so the background tells of this divine healing. It tells that, that the people noticed this healing that had occurred. They noticed. That this man who was lame was now walking. 
Let, let's read verses 11 through through uh, 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 13 of Acts chapter 3. And this time I'm going to read it out of the New, the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation. And it reads, And they all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade where, they, 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 where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. And Peter saw his opportunity and addressed the crowd. People of Israel, he said. That, what is so surprising about this? And why stare at us as though we have made this man walk by our own power or godliness? Yeah, Peter. Tell it like it is. Tell it like it is, Peter. Don't 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 come out of here surprised about all of this. Don't 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 come out here staring at us and looking at us as if we did this by our own power and our own strength. Yeah, tell it like it is, Peter. Don't 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 be amazed at all of this. Tell it like it is. Peter realized, he realized that he needed to make it clear to the people who actually performed this miracle. He needed the people to understand that, 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 that God had did this. This is a work of God. This, this is God's business. And, 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 and we got to be careful today. As, as they were back then, that, that, that when we see a man performing a miracle by the power of God, we, we can't get caught up in thinking that man is all that in a bag of chips. Because God will use anybody and everybody who is willing to, to be a servant for the Lord Jesus Christ. And he'll use them to perform miracles, signs, and wonders. Even you, if you submit to the will of God, he can work and wrought a miracle through you. That will amaze people. And then we have to be careful as leaders, those that God have anointed and used. That, that that we don't get the big head, that we don't let pride get us all caught up, because it's not you that's performing the miracle; it is God and God alone. And so Peter, he told them right off the bat. He started telling them like it is. We didn't do this. This divine healing. This man being healed, who was lame, walking, leaping, and praising God. His, his, this, this was done by God. Oh, hallelujah. We got to give credit what credit is due. We got to give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. One of the key concepts of this lesson, with our God, with God, excuse me, with God, all things are possible. With God, we can do anything and everything. And I just want to encourage somebody. Don't give up. Don't, 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 don't quit. Start trusting in God and knowing that, that through God, all things are possible. And if you know Christ Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you can truly say, I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me. Oh hallelujah. Praise his name. So that was the divine healing. And, and let, me, let, me, let me say this. Let me say this. God does. Still today. Provide divine healing. Miraculous healing. Don't let anybody tell you. That's just what they did in the. Old Testament time and the New Testament time, but that that's gone. No, 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 no. God still.
provides healing, divine healing. Matter of fact, any healing that you receive, whether you go to the doctor and get some medicine or whatever, it does not make a difference. Whether you change your, your exercise routine or start eating better, if your body needs to be healed, it is God that is performing that healing. And I just want to praise God for his healing power. Praise God for the fact that he can heal us. Whether we, we need healing from, from relationship problems, whether we need healing from, from financial problems, whether we need healing and deliverance from, from something that, 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 that's holding us back, God can heal us. Oh, hallelujah. I, I didn't got excited because when I start thinking about the healing of God, it just gets me excited. Divine healing just, just excites me. Oh, hallelujah. Our next point in this lesson is divine correction. And that starts off at verse uh, 13. Listen to verse 13. Verse 13 says, For it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has brought glory to his servant Jesus Christ. By doing this, this is the same Jesus whom you hanged over and rejected before Pilate. Handed over and rejected before Pilate. Despite Pilate's decision to release him, you rejected this holy, righteous one. Instead, demanded the release of a murderer. You, you kill the author of life, the prince of life, but, but God raised him from the dead. And, and we are witnesses of this fact. Verse, 13, verse 16 says, through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed. You now, you know how crippled he was before. Faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very eyes. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Peter, tell it like it is. Peter began to, to correct, giving divine correction to those who were all amazed and in an uproar. And he just told it like a T.I.S. He said, look, you need to understand. It's the, oh God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors. Who has brought glory to the name of Jesus by doing this. This is the same Jesus. Yes, it is. That you hung on the cross, that you gave over to Pilate and gave him over and rejected him and, 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 and let a murderer go, go loose. Peter wanted to make the people understand that they killed Jesus. And I say this to many people and it just get them really upset when I say this. I said, we've all killed Jesus. I don't care who you are. Because the word of God said God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that means everybody in the world, past, present, and future, were all a part of the killing of Jesus Christ. And that killing of Jesus Christ, some of us did it out of ignorance, and didn't know. Some of us didn't, they don't have a clue that we were part of the killing of Jesus. But when you've given your life to Jesus, you also recognize that you were up on the cross with him. Your sins and my sins and the sins of the world all were killed on that cross. And then when he got up, Three days later, we're resurrected life. The newness of life. When we realize 
that our sins are dead and we invest our faith in his death, burial, and resurrection, then we can realize and recognize that we too have been saved. Oh, hallelujah. So Peter began to correct them and tell it like it is. And now he said in that verse 16, through faith, in the name of Jesus, this man was healed. Not the man's faith. Not the lame man's faith. It was the faith of Peter and John that they invested in Jesus. That they believed that if they spoke the word of God, somebody, anybody, everybody might be healed. That's why they said silver and gold have I not. But what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Yes, many people. So I, I can't believe. I don't. I don't understand. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't, I, don't I, I don't care about what you believe. I don't care about what you understand. But I can speak a word according to God's will and way, and say, "Pick up your bed and walk. Be delivered." I encountered a young man on last week. Who said to me he he believes he's possessed by a demon. And would you would I pray for him? I said, Well, let me talk to you first. I said, Do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. You believe in his death, bear, and resurrection? Yes. You believe that he died for your sins and God raised? Yes, 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 yes. I say, Well then therefore you've been signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Spirit. A demon may attack you, but a demon can't possess you. So I got to praying with him, and 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 and, and as I began to pray with him, I, I realized that that he was going through some mental issues that he can contribute, I guess, to a demon. But it was some mental issues that he was going through, and I and I prayed for his healing. And I prayed that, that he would have sense enough to go to the doctor and ask for the proper medicine that will keep his temperament, his mind straight. Because what he'd been doing, he'd been self-medicating. Or oh, if you don't know what self-medication is, you go to the street pharmacies and get that. You don't go to the pharmacists <laughs> at CVS and Walgreens. You go to the street pharmacists. And that was part of his problem. And I prayed for his deliverance. And I spoke words of healing. Now, 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 uh, a mighty transference happened. And I praise God for that. And I want to see this week when I go see him if, if God's going to have done a sign and a wonder and a miracle in his life. Because if he has, oh Lord, oh Lord, if, it's, if it didn't happen, it's going to be something else up in there today. Oh, hallelujah. So now, so now we've talked about divine healing and we talked about divine correction. And then Peter, he says, now, 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 I, I got to tell you, there's some divine necessities. Now he even told him now it was through faith in the name of Jesus that, that this man was healed and, and, and was crippled. And faith in the name of Jesus has healed him before your very eyes. But now he says in verse 17, he says, friends. Brethren, I realize that what you and your leaders did to Jesus was done in ignorance. But God has fulfilled all that the prophets had foretold about the Messiah. That he must suffer these things. Now he says in verse 19, Repent of your sins and turn to God so that, that your sins may be wiped away. The time of refreshment 
will come from the presence of the Lord and he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. For he must remain in heaven until the time of the final restoration of all things. And God, as God has promised long ago through his holy prophet. There is a divine necessity and Peter was telling it like it is. We must repent. Repent and turn from our wicked ways. We must repent and turn from our wicked ways. And when you realize your need to repent. Repentance is defined as feeling remorse, contrary and self-reproach for what, what you have done or what you have failed to do. To be contrite is to feel such regret for past conduct. Peter was telling it like it is. And he challenged the people to repent and be converted. They needed to change their mind as we need to change our minds today. They needed to change their ways of thinking. And we need to change our ways of thinking. We need to put our faith in Jesus and submit to him and serve him. And as a result, we will experience his presence and his power in our lives as he restores us. And restoring means restoring somebody, bringing them back into existence, bringing them back. And reestablishing them and using them to bring them back to the original condition. Oh, yeah. You ever had your car overhauled? I've had a few cars overhauled. I had to take it back to, to the folks who, who built the car in the first place and have them overhaul the car. And that overhaul brought the car back to its original state. It, it, it received a reset. It drove better. It drove like it was brand new. We all need to repent and turn back to, to, to our maker, God himself. And he will restore us and make us over again. Is there anyone in your life who needs a healing to be refreshed and to be restored? Do you have the courage to challenge them, speak truth to them, expose areas of sin and rebellion? based on their ignorance of the truth regarding the word of God. He has salvation for them. Are you willing to step up to the plate and tell it like it is? Yes, tell it like it is. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. We thank you for loving us and providing a home in heaven for us. If we only repent and believe in your name, the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus, that name that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. We believe in you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you're on this line and 
You say, I, I don't know Jesus like that. Well, I'm going to tell you like it is. You need to invest your faith in Jesus Christ. You need to repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. And so, we like to pray the prayer of salvation with you. This prayer is a simple prayer. It's based on Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 and verse 13. And the question I always have to come, if you were to die tonight, do you know where you're going? Do you know where you'll spend eternity? Will you spend eternity in hell or will you spend eternity in heaven with God? Well, I want to be with God. I want to be in heaven. And I think you do too. Been through enough hell down here on this earth to spend eternity in hell. So let, let's, let's pray the prayer of salvation that we might give our lives to Christ and he will come into our hearts and be with us and keep us. Let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. For those on Facebook, we're going to close out this session and we're going to continue our conversation in the overtime period on the conference call. So if you want to call 619-639-4733, we welcome you to come onto the line with us and ask questions, give comments, 619-639. 4733. My final thoughts for today's lesson only Jesus fills the God shaped hole to make us old. Be blessed, Facebook.